me welcome my Ava to our stage tonight. Really glad that you're here tonight. We um, we gather each week like this at the well, and uh, on Sundays we devote our space to a time for a community. Uh, my name is Rob. I'm one of the co-founders of the Well Coffee House here, and um, thank you for drinking coffee with us. We're taking your caffeine addictions and leveraging those to uh, help bring hope to the world by uh, building clean water wells around the world. So uh, when you're here, when you purchase coffee throughout the week, um, we love being able to take the profits we earn on those and, and giving them back. So the well is a nonprofit missional coffee house. Um, and so our focus is, is global in that regards, but we're also very focused on our community here. And one of the ways that we are locally focused is that uh, we, we do some things that we, we give our profits to local opportunities to serve needs. But uh, one of the real intentional things that we do is that we gather in community just like this on Sunday. So at 11 or 1045 at our Brentwood store and then 5 p.m. here, we get together and talk openly about faith. It's a place uh, where, um, where we talk openly about um, the, the creator that we believe in. So we believe in a bigger story. We believe that that bigger story is being authored by God and that that God became uh, a part of this world. And so the well is named after a story uh, that comes straight out of the Gospels. It's a story in which Jesus meets a woman at a well and he meets her in the midst of her brokenness and he accepts her just as she is. And in this story, um, we, we decided to name our coffee house after this story as a, as a way of declaring what we're about, a community, a space where anyone and everyone is welcome uh, at any time. And so as we gather and talk about faith, I know for some people, uh, when it comes to religious conversation, that may feel like an exclusive thing. But we have decided here that as we talk openly about faith, that we don't all have to exactly agree or have the exact same opinion on doctrines, but we believe that even the way we're sitting says something about us tonight, that we are sitting at table. And in table, if you look in the Gospels, Jesus seems to sit with those that um, aren't always like him. In fact, oftentimes are not like him. And he's accused of being a friend of sinners and a friend of those that believe different things, and yet Jesus continues to sit at the table with many who don't look like him and act like him and think like him, and yet he loves them and he celebrates over them. So tonight we want to say to you, welcome, and uh, if you've been looking for a place uh, where you can know that you're loved right where you are, we just invite you to be as you are. We don't, uh, don't want to impose this upon you. If you've just come to study or to hang out or have coffee, please be as you are. Don't let us impose this on you, but know that you're welcome to participate. My name is going to lead us in a few songs um, as we sing openly about faith, and then I'll be back up to introduce you to a very, very special guest tonight. Uh, that you're going to be encouraged and blessed by um, in just a few minutes. So, Maya, why don't you lead us a few songs? Again, glad you're here tonight. Hope you enjoy.
again to my Ava for leading us so well. Good job, Ava. Thank you so much. Well, I love each week when we gather together because we get to hear from different voices in our community and um, I'm just a facilitator here and uh, I love to, to get to facilitate community and, and letting you hear from different voices in our community that I believe are, are helping us to see and hear about Jesus in new and fresh ways. And about two months ago, uh, I met a young man who has had a deep impact on my life already just in a short time. Um, I have the privilege, something I love to do every day, is to get to stand before students at Lipscomb University and, and teach. I love to teach and I love to, to think maybe that I have something to offer, but what happens almost daily, Julio, you know this because you teach as well, and Leonard and some of you in here are teachers, you know how this goes, but so often we end up with the ones that become the student because our students have so much to say and um, so many ways that they shape us and mold us. And, so a couple of months ago, I had the privilege of meeting someone that I didn't get to have in class as a student, but uh, in my role at Lipscomb over the last couple of months, my new role, um, I had the privilege of, of meeting Corey. And as Corey and I began to get to know each other, he began to tell me a little bit about his life and his family and, and what he believes. And he said he felt like God was really speaking to him to share more um, openly about his faith. And so. I said, Corey, I think I've got an opportunity for you. How about you come and, and sit with us at the well uh, one Sunday morning and also one Sunday night and, and share your faith with us? And um, Corey, you remember that moment as well as I do because you, yes, got, I you got very emotional and, and so did I. Uh, Corey uh, kind of just began weeping out loud at, at the opportunity to be here with you tonight. And um, it meant that much to him to be able to share. So um, I want you to meet Corey tonight. Corey recently graduated from Lipscomb University uh, with a degree in marketing and um, tonight he's going to share not really his education in, in business or marketing, he's going to share what the business, uh, what Jesus has been up to in his life and um, and I want you to hear tonight a, a story and, a, uh, and some words of encouragement and, and faith and Corey you've already meant so much to me, I know you and I haven't spent a whole lot of time together but in those times that we have you've impacted me greatly already and um, I know the words that you have to say tonight are going to bless those that are here. Um, I'm glad your family is here tonight. We want to welcome you guys. So glad that you're here tonight. And um, in sharing community, we have so many different voices that are, that are a part of um, speaking faith. And the one that you're here tonight is, um, is not one that claims to be polished and to have it all figured out. What you're going to hear is, just like we all are, a work in progress. And so Corey is going to just share out of the, the rawness and the tenderness of his journey. And uh, so I would invite you right into the middle of that. Um, so Corey, we want to give you a warm welcome. I'm going to bring the mic down here to you. So help me welcome Corey. that I that I um, spent a lot of time with and then uh, I went out for I went out for burgers one night 
and I'm sorry. Um, and then I met a girl that didn't know it at the time, but means a lot to me even though she moved away quite some years, years ago now. Because, and guys, I'm sorry, but this is gonna be different than the morning set. Should I pull it already? But, um, getting back to the story, um, so I met this girl kind of by happen fast. I remember the day like it was literally yesterday. Um, me and my father were going to meet some people for a barbecue. And for whatever reason, that fell through. And neither of us were very hungry, and I didn't really want to get all dressed up. So we ended up going off of burgers. And before we even got in the car, um, I, I met a girl and her mother. I be, would be very mistaken if I would tell her mother. Um, but the girl obviously got to know her a lot better. And her, her name is not important, to be honest with you. She, uh, she does stuff and did stuff and continues to do stuff without even knowing it. That has impacted my journey. And I would be remiss if I didn't point that out. You know, it's the fun stuff that I might not cry through. Um, um, I guess the second step on my journey, quote unquote, is um, uh, February 13th, 2011. Um, I, I woke up for whatever reason at 7, 7.30, something like that, to go to church because I figured I was at look, so now I better act the part. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, I don't know if I'm too close to mic or whatever, but um, I ended up going, and long story short, I ended up getting baptized. Why? Because a pretty blonde girl said, you ought to get baptized. <laughs> so I did. What? Um, but I, I, I never have regretted getting baptized when I did. But I can say without a shadow of a doubt, thank you very much. I'm like kicking something. Um, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that at that time, I did not fully grasp what I was getting into. I, I thought this would be a way to get the new, get to know the girl better. And um, yeah, everything else would figure itself out. I, I would do the God thing if it felt like it. And um, on other days, I would have a headache and just not want to go. Um, but it goes far beyond that because that same year, and I'm rambling more than I did for the morning, so, but whatever. That same year, um, I happened to um, be looking for an elevator, because, you know, I'm, I'm me. I need an elevator. I can't go up and down the stairs, because that's not something that is very comfortable for either party. Um, <laughs> so I was looking for an elevator, and I actually asked one of the girls that got me baptized, one of her friends, but I only knew him as the friend of the girl because his name didn't matter. <laughs> well, well, it turns out that uh, he came to the morning session. He, he does not know that he is getting such a grand part in this, but he came to the morning session. And he had to work tonight. But he uh, he has impacted my life in more ways and doing more menial tasks. One of which includes taking me to the bathroom when I need to go. Um, he has 
impacted my life in more ways than I can count and to repay him because I've known him for four years and I know stuff about him but makes him tick. I, I give him sarcasm. I, I joke with him and I'm like, dude, I accept you for who you are. And the way I am, if I accept people, you get back on, on a little bit. Um, but he has done more than I can explain in however long, long y'all are willing to sit here and listen to me around. So I'm gonna move on. Um, uh, um, but it wasn't until the summer of, and stay with me, I'm skipping ahead. The summer of uh, 2012 that I, that I fully began to grasp what was happening. My parents were away at actually getting my brother into college because he was a freshman at the time. Uh, and they were away and I had arranged it to where uh, this same guy I was talking about earlier could um, bring me to this camp. And, and I didn't know exactly know what to do with him when I got there, but he would be at the camp. And so it turns out that he ended up backing out at the last moment. And I arranged for other people to take care of me for the week. Without getting too deep, because I've rambled enough. Without getting too deep, I um I have I took away from that camp the passion and the enthusiasm that I hope comes out of my speech tonight. And yes guys, that was just the opening paragraph. Um so let's get into why I'm up here. Well, I'm obviously up here because I can't walk and I'm blind. That's what the outsider would say. I would hope that the insider would see my my just overall passion for what I'm doing. And let me stop right here and tell me tell you that it doesn't it, guys, it could be I I know I know about half the room, but it could be any one of you. It doesn't have to be me. My situation got me here. My drive and determination has really led me to do this with the same passion that I do everything in life. Uh, before I forget, and I know that this is just disjointed, but it has a good message at the end, I promise. Um, before I forget, there was this blonde girl, and about half, half the room knew. So I'm talking about, because I like talk about her all the time. Hmm. So we're hanging out, you know, just me and her. And um, <laughs> she actually, she took me to church. Her brother took me to church, and he went off to do his thing and left me with her. And um, little did I know it at the time, how, how did that abandonment become one of the greatest slime ever uttered by a human being? And I'm not kidding. It was that good. So I'm sitting there talking to her, and I'm like, I started out almost every conversation with, I have a question. And then she would say, what's, what's your question? So, I mean, usually I, it would be like, I like pie, or do you like pie, or do you like apples, or something, and you know, me, here's the sky blue, that's a fun one. <laughs> but, um, um, 
I, for whatever reason, I asked her what the meaning of life was. And she flipped me upside down because this thing can go upside down. It's amazing. Uh, we will not demonstrate that to <laughs> But she flipped me upside down. And she said some of the best words, I'm not, I'm not a bad word, some of the deepest words that still to this day, you know, heck of a walk to it. She said, the meaning of life is to serve God and have fun doing So, yeah, not that big a deal. Just, just told me the meaning of life is. Um, and for whatever reason, be it that she was hurt, or be it that it really stuck with me, I could not get this phrase out of, out of my head. So I, I started telling people, and as I started telling people, I got more and more of an urge to just preach, uh, regardless of who was listening. I, I got an urge to preach and started booking gigs, like a, it's a good, I don't know the technical term for it, but um, I started, uh, uh, they started letting me speak at Wednesday Night Devo's and a few other stuff right across the street here. And that was fun. The first one was, was literally, I called it a love letter to my friends. And I'm like, that was good. This, this, there's a fire here, there's something to come of it. So I just did my thing, and I liked it so much I did it two years later. And basically, at the end of the second one, be it whether my dog died, like, a month before, or be it overwhelming passion for what I was saying, it could be a mixture of both. Um, at the end of it, I broke down crying. And I'm like, this is going to be the, the last time that I ever do something like this. The last time that I will ever look at these people in the eye and be able to impact them. And, um, guys, I hate to say it, but God had another, another plan. And I fully believe that, my, that his plan is being lived out in me every day. Okay, here's the part where my friends are awesome. Um, I hang out with people that, and I don't know if there's anybody here that might be offended by this, but I promise I mean nothing by it. I hang out with people that I've been told by a high-ranking official, but will not be named, that why do, you, why do you hang out with these people? They're basically broken with some of the water. Well, that, that, uh, that's needless to say. Rub me about five ways from Sunday. <laughs> so, um, what I ended up doing is I told the people that were involved in what was going on, hey, so-and-so said that it's about you, uh, and needless to say, that ticked off. So I'm like, guys, I don't know if this will do anything, but I'm going to run a renegade chapter. And that is literally what I called it. It wasn't for chapter credit. We, we stowed away in like a, a room in Elam upstairs. Um, and literally, I um, prayed, uh, talked for now. And I had everybody from homosexuals to atheists to by, by, by curious show up to this thing, and I'm like, guys, you, you really are. And I started quoting the parable of the lost sheep, and I did that for about an hour. 
Maybe less. Maybe more. I don't know. But I remember the Facebook status I had about it. And the Facebook status literally said, the fire is back. Something lit, lit, lit in me again. Sorry, I haven't drunk anything in my all day. Um, but I started realizing that this, this is a fire that is only going to intensify. And I don't know how. I didn't know how I was going to do it, do this, and marketing at the same time. So my parents went out of town again. I'm sorry, Mom and Dad. You're just not getting a big part in this. <laughs> I'll circle back around how awesome they are later. Trust, trust me. Uh, so my parents are out, out of town again, and I'm actually with a mutual, a mutual friend of ours that Rob knows very well, and I have grown to know him over the years very well. He actually stepped in to the morning session, even though we had to work. Um, so, yeah, he's a nice guy. Anyway, um, um, he said, and I quote, if you're interested in this ministry thing, <coughs> give Rob Touchstone an email or friend him on Facebook, or whatever the hip thing to do was six months ago. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, but, um, uh, I've already rambled more than I having the previous session, but I have y'all all sitting here for it to you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, long story short, um, I emailed Rob, and he, he had just had a new baby, and child transition, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't remember, to be honest. So I emailed him, I remember this like it was yesterday too. I emailed him at least twice, maybe three times, saying, We've never met, but I want to meet you because Ron says you're amazing. And anything Ron says is okay by me. So we end up meeting like a month, two months later. And I just, I start telling him. The story, obviously more in detail, but I don't know how I'm going to make this segue, but I will anyway. Um, what God has taught me through those experiences that I've mentioned and so many more is um, you can find God literally anywhere you look as long as you look hard enough. If you look in the soul of a person that claims to not know God with a flashlight and maybe some actual some actual talking to them that's not done much nowadays. Uh, but if you actually if you search for God in a person, you will find it. His their light might be dimmer than other people, but that's just because they haven't been exposed to who God is and who Christ is. And so getting back to my ragtag group of friends, um, what, I, what I've learned is it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. <sighs> Let me see if you remember this from the previous session because they quoted it four times. But should remember it. Um, what I said earlier was, it doesn't matter where you are, and it doesn't matter where you think you are. When you walk with God, God will find you where you are and accept you. God will find you where you are and accept you where you've been and get you where you need to be. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm 
serious, guys. When I say anyone can be up here, I literally mean anyone. If my mom wanted to take the bike, she could say some embarrassing stories on him, sure. But she could say what God means to her, and it would be completely different than what God means to me. It's because we've led different stories, and we've built our own lives, and our experience shapes our view of God. And just because you, okay, I'm gonna have to think of an example, but I promise I'm not calling anybody. Let's say you have done something and been exonerated for it. Well, God sees that, and God knows that, but he accepts you for doing it. He doesn't like the fact that you did it. I, I, I mean to paint no picture of a God that accepts the actual act of failing, but that's the point, guys. God accepts us and finds us where we are and will mold us into the people. It might take weeks, it might take years, it might take decades, but he will mold us into the people we are meant to be. Um, and I, I think that goes for really anybody in here. And this is where I shut up. But I do want to say one more thing. I will be around uh, the well because, well, I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> quite frankly, quite frankly, I'm hungry. But your your stories are important to me, and I cannot stress that enough. So if you're willing to sit down with me for five, ten, fifteen minutes. Um, if you're willing to sit down with me for even two minutes and let me hear part of your journey, I would love that. Because, guys, my journey is not over. It's just beginning. And my favorite part is, is taking the roads that nobody expected to take and meeting such Brilliant people. Alex, stand up. I'm serious. Stand up. <laughs> this is the boyfriend of a very, 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 very close friend of mine. Um, I commandeered him for the day. He's been my chauffeur for the day. And I did not expect that. I did not demand that he do that. But he did that. And, and, Guys, that's just one example of, of the life and of, you can sit down if you want. <laughs> of the twist and turn my life takes, uh, I might not get it done the conventional way. And I might need help along the way. But as long as I remain faithful and um, never forget the higher purpose, um, God will give me where I need to go. So, in closing, I just want to thank Julio Rivas. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> this man, let's see, he was my, he was my finance teacher about two years ago. He, he did not have to come. He wanted to come because my name was a and for that, I am eternally grateful. Guys, half of, half of my professors and really, really, really annoying friends, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody stare at him. <laughs> it's six o'clock. I gotta leave in a minute to so wrap up. <laughs> Not free from your schedule. <laughs> Sorry, that's not how this works.
works. But I'm almost done, I promise. Um, what, I, what I was going to say next was simply that I've got teachers here and friends and colleagues and, and I'm not going to say, say the second one, but um, I've got people here, to my knowledge, I haven't done the hmm yet, but to my knowledge that literally I have not corresponded with in, in two years, three years, maybe even longer. Um, and it just means so much to me that they came and let me share this rather long and strenuous story with you. And I wasn't kidding about the wanting to get to know the people that are here. If I can help you in any way, shape, or form, I'll be around for a bit after. I really do want to meet you and get to know you and find out what you thought because, guys, I promise I wouldn't say this. And here I go saying it. And it's on the camera, so it's, it's here forever. Guys, when I preach or speak or whatever, the way God works and the way my, my relationship with God works is I will forget what I say literally five minutes after I put the mic down. I like it that way. I keep things fresh. But, I mean, in closing, and I really do mean it this time, my, my goal is, and I've told Rob this several times, is if I impacted one person in here in a positive way, then I've done, I've done God's work. And, and that's really all that matters to me, is that I was able to impact one person. Sorry for the, for the 50 or so others in here, but uh, <laughs> what, what, really, what really bothers me is that when most preachers preach, they preach to a crowd. This is normal, you want to get the most bang for your buck. But they don't stop, and with the exception of Rob and a few others, and I'm not just throwing that in there, but with the exception of Rob and a few others, um, preachers do not take the time to get to, get to know the individual stories that God has led him to. And in my opinion, that's the best part. Bye, Bennett. Goodbye, Tori. <laughs> so I'm really done now, but I'm going to pray for you. Um, so give me 30 more seconds to uh, Dear Heavenly Father, I just I pray for all these people. The ones that I know and have known for years, the ones that I'm getting to know, and the ones that I don't know and will get to know. And finally, I pray for those people that I will never get to meet. May you keep your light and them alive, and may you guide them somewhere where their light can shine bright. Amen. Corey said his goal was if he could impact one person in the room, it would be a blessing to him. But I have a feeling that it's been a whole lot more than one that you've been impacted. Would you help me? You know, I, I think that what we just experienced has been, and I want to say this as much to you, Corey, as, as much to everybody, but I think what, we, what we've just experienced is a whole lot like what we see in the early church where people are trying to figure this whole thing out about what it means to follow Jesus. And you've got a Jesus who's called fishermen and tax collectors and, 
and people who don't have it all figured out in life. And I imagine them sitting around and talking openly about their faith without all of the official religious language and just telling the story of their lives. And that's what Corey has just done for us. And I've seen Jesus in that in so many ways. Thank you very much. And so you've you've led us tonight uh, to to a very special place, which is a place where we gather in community and, and we share a very important part of community, which is something we call communion. And I imagine Jesus' first followers, after Jesus has ascended to heaven and left things in their hands, these guys that are figuring it out, these, these uh, disciples who are trying to know how to advance this kingdom that he's left in their hands, and someone takes out bread, and someone takes out wine, and they say, guys, let's remember the story. They're sitting in a home, or they're sitting in their favorite coffee house in first century Israel. They're sitting in a marketplace, and they're wondering, how do we do this? We don't know. And, and we kind of begin with confession tonight and say, we don't have all this figured out, this how to do church and, and how to follow Jesus perfectly, even 2,000 years later. But we say tonight that we want with all of our heart to do what you said. We want to love God, and I love what your friend told you, and to have fun doing it. You know, Jesus certainly had a lot of things to say about taking up our cross and, and following him. And most of the times when he tells his disciples that this is going to cost them their lives, they don't get it. They, they don't have the capacity to understand that, much like we don't when we try to think of that today. But Jesus didn't just teach us how to die, even though that is a, a foundational part of it. He, he taught us how to live. He taught us how to sit together in community and to enjoy the presence of one another. And that's what we've done tonight with you, Corey, is we've enjoyed your presence. Just you being here in our midst has been a, a gift and a blessing. And did you hear what Corey offered to you? He offered his presence back. He said, you know, if, if I could just get to know you, if I could just spend a few minutes with you, and that's what we're about here is community and, and loving each other and meeting each other right where we are. So thank you for leading us to the table. So as we move into the next few moments together, we take out bread and we take out cup and we say, let's remember how Jesus taught us how to live. And let's remember how Jesus taught us how to die. And so we're going to pass around some bread and, and some cup. We've got it right over here. We invite you, if that means sharing a conversation at your table, something that you just heard Corey share that, that gave you a glimmer of the presence of Jesus. Or maybe it's a song that Mike is going to lead us that you just want to sing along and enjoy the, the communion of worship. Or maybe it's a quiet moment where you bow your head and pray. Whatever it may be in this moment, we celebrate a Jesus who has come close, who has come near. I believe tonight in the very presence of Corey as his mouthpiece to speak to us. So thank you for being his voice tonight. We've heard from Jesus by hearing from you tonight. I have no doubt. And so we take this bread and we remember a body that was given for us. And we say tonight that this body is is the very reason that we can confess our brokenness. As we break this bread, we remember that we too are broken. And we don't have to hide that. We don't have to say tonight that we have to wear a mask or pretend to be something that we're not. I love how Corey described the kind of people that he wants to hang around. Because Corey, those are the kind of people that I want to be around too. People that are like me, trying to figure things out. People that are honest about being broken. And so tonight we just bring it all together and say we all have a lot of work that needs to be done in our lives. But praise be to God that Jesus meets us where we are. And it's through His grace that we celebrate in this bread and this cup that we have hope in life. And that we have our identity. And that we can really know who we are. So in these moments of community and communion, we invite you to share bread and share cup in whatever way that you feel compelled tonight. My is going to lead us in a song, so feel free to sing along if you'd like, or feel free again to have a quiet moment or to share with someone who is nearby. So Maya, if you'll lead us and we'll share. In